Well, friends, I wanted to uh, make you aware of something before we get started in today's scripture. Um, we're walking through Ephesians, so we're going to be in Ephesians. If you want to get a copy of uh, God's Word out there in the pew, if you're joining us online, you need to find your Bible. You can open that up to Ephesians. We just started last week uh, walking through the book of Ephesians together. Uh, so we're still in chapter 1. We're going to finish up chapter 1. But before we, we dive into that, I wanted to make you aware of something we're going to be doing next week. Uh, we've got something very special planned next week, next Sunday night. I want to invite you to be out here. I want you to invite some friends. Um, the Lord has laid on my heart a very special message uh, next week. Um, we are seeing uh, our culture, uh, we're seeing our families be infiltrated uh, like we haven't seen in this country before. Um, and uh, Sunday night, a week from today, is going to be a recommended adults-only service. So uh, we do have child care available, uh, our children's ministry. We have a ministry activities in the Family Life Center. So uh, parents, use your discretion, but I would advise that uh, there and there. We're going to be uh, looking at some of what's going on in our society today. We're going to be looking uh, at some of these uh, demonic things that are taking place in our culture. We're going to be taking a look at uh, some of uh, what's been hitting our society, some sexual immorality, uh, suicide, uh, a lot of issues that we're facing right now as a culture. And some of us in this very room uh, may have been facing recently, uh, whether friends or uh, loved ones have been facing. So Sunday night, a week from tonight, I want to invite you to be out here uh, for our service. Uh, if you're a parent, if you're a grandparent, I want you to be here. The uh, Lord's got something he wants to share with us uh, from his word about what we're seeing in our culture right now, the attack uh, that's been taking place, the enemy, as he's been going to destroy the family uh, here in our society and our culture. Uh, so please mark that on your calendars uh, and be here uh, Sunday night, a week from today. Uh, we're going to be having a very special message uh, from the Lord uh, dealing with some of these issues uh, that, that we're facing as a society, as a community right here in Juniper Bay. Um, so please mark that on your calendars. I uh, hope you're able to get there to Ephesians. Uh, today, as we continue our walk through Ephesians, uh, we're going to be looking at wisdom uh, we're going to be looking at true wisdom. Now, uh, we know in Proverbs, uh, I'm going to hop over to Proverbs. If you want to hop there with me real quick before we get started in Ephesians, you're probably familiar with this passage, Proverbs chapter 3. There are songs uh, that have been written from this passage. Trust in the Lord. Maybe you know the song. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. Lead not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Depart from evil. Uh, we're going to be touching on that uh, next Sunday night and this morning as we look at being wise and we look at this letter that Paul sent to the early church. Uh, and as they're reading this, this letter is just as applicable to us today, 2,000 years later as it was to the early church. We looked at last week uh, kind of the context of, of what this letter was as we uh, opened up the greeting that Paul had to the early church and laying the foundation. Last week we looked at the first part of chapter 1 and we saw everything was through him, in him, and that him being Christ. And how many times Paul kept on saying, in Christ, in Christ, these things, in him, in him. And as a church, as a community, our foundation of all that we do is because of him, through him, and in him. That him being Christ, in Christ alone. Uh, that we are a church, the body of Christ, a people. Uh, and this morning we're going to continue here. So Ephesians chapter 1, let's hop down to verse 15. That's where we left off last week. He continues in this letter, and he says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is exceeding greatness of his power to us, Lord, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning, friends. Uh, Father God, Lord, as we open up your word, and this morning in the time that we have, we, we look at wisdom. 
Lord, we know from the Old Testament to the New Testament, Lord, you got a lot to say about it. Now, Father God, this morning, may our minds be open, may our hearts be open to hear from you. Oh, Spirit, move in this place. Lord, that we leave here changed than what we came in. That maybe, Father God, we, we leave here with a renewed boldness and passion to share your love and light with this world. And maybe this morning there's one in here, there's one joining us online that has not entered into a relationship with you. Maybe today is the day. Lord, you're drawing them near to you. Lord, whatever it is you want of us, let it not be Jonathan, but you speak to us this morning, Father God. Lord, may we be obedient, uh, Father God, to follow in all that you're calling us to. Let your will be done in our time together. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And say amen. Well, friends, uh, these keys to wisdom we're going to look at this morning, I got four of them. Okay, four keys. If you like to take notes, you just want to do like a one, two, three, four. Super simple. We're going to pull out four keys of wisdom that Paul is giving uh, to the early church in this letter uh, to Ephesus. And he's giving it to us today as well. And now, as we kind of looked at beforehand, uh, Proverbs, you might be familiar with it. We know God is saying, listen, don't lean on your own understanding. Don't be, don't be wise in your own eyes, uh, but lean on him. And, and Paul is picking right up from this. Now, he, he has this memorized, right? Okay, his Torah. He, He's got it all memorized. He knows the scriptures. He's picking up where it left off. And he's saying, listen, don't lean on your own understanding. Don't be wise in your own eyes, but lean on the Lord. So the question we have this morning is, well, how do I do that then? All right, preacher, I, I, I say, yeah, I know I'm not the smartest guy in the room sometimes. Maybe I'm not the wisest guy in the room. And I know I need to lean on the Lord's understanding. How do I do that? I'm glad you asked. This morning, we're going to look at what Paul gave him. And I see four things, and there's more than four, but there's four we're going to look at this morning. Four ways, four keys for wisdom. For wisdom this morning. The first one, begin by thanking God. Begin with a spirit of thankfulness. Begin by thanking God. Did you see what he did in verse 15? He said, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Paul was thanking them. He, he, he gave thanks to God for a couple things. The first thing we saw was their faith. He says, I give thanks to God for your faith. There was a testimony that was going forth from this community, and Paul was aware of it. Now, we know back in the day, they don't have their computers, they're not on their cell phones with it. Like, word was getting, and even in that, listen, the word was getting, there was a testimony that was getting out, and Paul's heard of their faithfulness. He says, I'm giving thanks to the Lord for your faith. Oh, friends, in our own lives individually and in our lives as a community, the body of Christ, oh, may there be a testimony that's going forth from this place, that's spilling out into Juniper Bay Road, that's flooding Conway with our faith, that people know them by what? Their love, their faith. Oh, may it be known of us as a church. May it be known of us individually. In our life. If, if someone was to ask, if, if someone was to pin that letter, and they're kind of doing the greeting, and maybe you, you, you like to write letters, and you do your normal greeting. Hey, hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good time. Thanks, thanks for doing this. If they were to write a letter about you, oh, may it be said, I give thanks to God for your faithfulness. Oh, I, I praise God for your faith. Do people know about your faith? We, we've been looking at this on Sunday nights. We've been walking through a series called Life on Mission. And tonight, we're going to finish that series up tonight. I want you to join us tonight. Life on Mission. And we've been looking at how we're missionaries, our, our everyday life. No matter where God has positioned you, He's uniquely positioned and called you to be a missionary in your home, to be a missionary at work, to be a missionary at school, at the grocery store, at the gas station, wherever you are, to go and share His love and His light with all. He's uniquely positioned you somewhere different than He's positioned me. You've got neighbors that I don't have living next door to you. You've got co-workers that you work by that I'm not next to every day. God has uniquely positioned you in a sphere of influence. To be that mission. Listen, are you known by your faith? Are you known by your faith? As a church, as we start this brand new year, we're in September. It's a brand new church year. Are we known by our faith? He says, I give thanks to God for your faith. And then he goes on another one. And then he also gives thanks for them for their love for one another. He says, I give, I give thanks to God for your faith and your love for one another. Listen, there's a love. There's a love that goes out. Are you known for your love? For your love of others, we've looked at this before. We looked at it a few weeks ago, sacrificial love. Uh, we took a look at sacrificial love and what that means to, to give of ourselves, to give of our resources, to give of our time, to love others sacrificially. As Jesus painted the ultimate picture of sacrificial love. They were known by their love. 
There was a thankfulness that was going place. They, they were, there was a thankfulness for their faith. There was a thankfulness for their love to others. Likewise, in your faith, are you known by your love for others? As a church, are we known for our love for others? Is, is love known among you? There was a third one. He says, Paul thanked God for them continuously. It wasn't just kind of like a one prayer and done. I like to write notes and bulletins, and I've got a little notepad that I like to keep notes in, and my notepad fills up quick, and I like to, I go back through the week, and I'll go back, and I'll read through, and I'll write people's names down, and I'll pray for them. Maybe you've seen the little videos, I like doing little videos, maybe, maybe you've seen a little video that I've posted uh, here at Juniper Bay, and usually at the end, I'll, I'll say, hey, hey, I'm praying for you. I want you to know that's not just me saying, hey, I'm praying for you, and then I get in my car and I leave. No, friends, listen, I pray for you. I write it down continuously. Paul is telling them, listen, I give thanks to God for your faith. I give thanks to God for your love. And listen, he's giving thanks to the Lord continuously, continuously, continuously. Scripture tells us to pray with what? Without ceasing. There's intentionality behind that. When we say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure this time, maybe it's the same time, maybe it's when you rise in the morning, maybe it's at lunchtime, maybe it's before you go to bed at night, that you've put time in your schedule, you have prioritized your time with the Lord to talk to Him, and you've written down names. And it may just be a couple family members that you know that are going through a difficult time. It might be some of those coworkers you know that they're really struggling right now. It, it may be some people that are doing it. It might be that prayer list we go through on Sunday morning. And here in the bulletin, You'll see there's a prayer section, and there's a list of names. There's a list of names on there. And maybe that's the list, and you just want to start and highlight a couple of those names and say, Lord, I'm going to pray for those individuals. I want to encourage you to make a prayer list. Make a list of individuals that you know that you need to be in, and continuously pray for them. And here's something cool that happens. If you like to keep, some people they do it, and then you'll kind of, you know, kind of put them to the side. Or maybe some people have a stack, or I've got old little notebooks. And they, you can go back and see how God was working in those situations. There's something super cool about that, I'm telling you. You can go back and you can look and say, Lord, I was praying about this situation. And I was praying, you can go back and maybe look at your prayer journal. And you can see how God was moving in that situation. A lot of times when we're in the fire, when we're in the battle, we don't see all that God is doing. We don't have that picture that he has. But then as time goes on, we look back and we open up that prayer journal. We say, oh God, I see what you were doing there. Oh, it was painful in the season. Oh, it hurt in that season. But God, I see how you were working. I want to encourage you to pray for one another. As Paul is praying for this early church, he's praying for the believers continuously. Oh, make it a priority to thank God. Thank God for others' faith. Thank God for the love. Thank God continuously. And thank God for his blessings. Thank God for his blessings in our life. Oh, friends, this morning, as we were reminding that little video uh, of September 11th, oh, I thank God to be living in this nation. Well, we can gather on a Sunday morning. We can gather on a Sunday night. We can come together on a Wednesday night. We can have Bible study here. I can carry the word of God wherever I want to carry the word of God. I can preach his name. I can tell others freely about my faith. Amen. Friends, there's brothers and sisters that are living in countries where that's not possible. And they're pressing on in the faith under persecution from governments and authorities. Oh, friends, give blessings. Listen, thank God for the blessings that he's bestowed in your life. I remember I was with a, a pastor once, and we did a little illustration. And uh, he had index cards. You know what I'm talking about? Those little, like, three-by-five index cards, okay? So he handed them out to the whole church. Hands them out to the whole church. And um, he's like, I want y'all to, to fill in there what, what, what you're praying for. Just kind of fit, before the sermon started, he's like, just fill in what, what, what have you been praying for? So, you know, can we kind of all fill them out? I fill them out too, you know, I'm filling it out. And he gets kind of to the end of the service. And uh, he's there towards the end of the service. He said, all right, we're going to come back to those little note cards now. So we all kind of, you know, pull out our note cards. And we're like happy, right? We're like, all right, I wrote, hey, I did my assignment. Like, <laughs> check the box. I filled out my note card. He said, let's take a look at these note cards. And he starts telling a story. He said uh, he had a cousin that was diagnosed with cancer. He said, I got a cousin that was diagnosed with cancer, and um, he said, you know, I, we, we used to pray and pray, and we, we prayed and prayed and prayed for this cancer, and um, the cancer just kept on getting worse. It kept on getting worse, and we prayed fervently, and we prayed fervently, and it kept on getting worse and worse, and eventually uh, his cousin succumbed to that cancer and went to glory. And he said he had a season there of bitterness. He had a season there where he was upset. And then God revealed something to him about his prayer life. He said, he said you know, I was driving down the road one day, and I passed a, a fancy car. I passed this fancy car, and I'm sitting there driving. I'm like, oh, you know what? It would be nice to have that car. Y'all ever done that? Oh, man, it would be nice. to. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Look at that ride. He's driving his old beat-up car. Oh, that's a nice car. And then this thought of covetousness. 
began to come into his mind. And he said, no, that's wrong. I'm going, to, I'm going to be thankful for the blessings I have. I'm going to be thankful for what you've given me, God, and I'm going to glorify you, even if I don't have that car. And then this light bulb went off in his head, and he said, oh, my goodness, I've been doing that about my cousin. He said, I was jealous of other people's healing. Because in my bitterness, I was like, God, why didn't you heal my cousin when you healed these people? Oh, God, why didn't I get that when you gave them to that? And just like that car that was going down the road, he was sitting there with this jealousy and this covetousness of what God did in someone else's life. So he has us kind of come back to our note card, right? Like, so now we're coming back to our note card, and we're sitting there like, oh, no, what did I write on my note card? And he's like, I want you to pull out your little index cards. He says, does it start with I want? And like, we're all like, yup. <laughs> Mine said, I want my daughter back. That's what I wrote on my card. And around the room, we're all looking at these little index cards, and it was what I want. I said, God, what do you want? What do you want to do in a situation that seemed like all was lost? God, what do you want to do in this life event? God, what do you want to do with me? Am I going to be submissive to your authority? Am I going to submit to your will in my life? And it began to transform the room. Everybody starts crying, and we're like, oh, my goodness, God, what, what has my prayer life been? Has it just been a covetousness prayer life where I'm just praying for other people's things that I want in my life? Or has my prayer life been, God, I, I'm thankful for the blessings that you have given me. Oh, let me use these blessings. Let me use what you have blessed me with the time that I have on this earth to proclaim your goodness and your gospel to the ends of the earth. Oh, friends, we begin to open our eyes. I'm sitting there. I'm like bawling. I'm like on the second row. I'm like where Pastor James is, right? I'm like crying because I was doing worship at the church. I was leading worship. And I'm like, all right, we got to come up for invitation time. And he's probably standing like, oh, great. Now my worship leader's bawling. Like, all right, we, we, Jonathan, we got a song to do. But listen, pray continuously and thank God for the blessings. Thank God for the blessings. It's so easy to get focused on the negative and like things that are going wrong and like God, why? And that bitterness wants to creep in. Oh, have a spirit of thankfulness. That first key to wisdom is thankfulness. Being thankful. Being thankful for the people in your lives. Being thankful for the love. Being thankful for your faith. Being thankful for the blessings that have come from the Lord. The second key. The second key. Ask God to help you comprehend the riches of His glory. Excuse me. To understand His calling on your life. Ask God to help you understand His calling on your life. You see, Paul's talking to the early church about this in verse 17. He says, he's continuing this prayer. He says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. And then he says in 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Paul is praying that the believers would come to a genuine understanding of divine truth through wisdom and revelation. Paul is praying that their understanding would include a comprehension of the hope of God's calling in their lives and God's purpose in their lives. Oh, friends, a wise person will submit to God and will pray for understanding and a hope of His calling in our lives. Friend, He's given us all a calling. He's given you a call. As long as there is air in your... Listen, as long as you're here breathing today, friends, if you're joining us online, God has given you a purpose and a mission. He's given you a calling. Paul's reminding the early church, listen, I'm praying that you... God reveals that calling to you. A wise person is going to understand God's calling in their life. And you're going to enter into that calling. And you're going to follow faithfully in the steps that He guides you in. Not being wise in our own eyes. Well, God, you know, I, I, I think I need to be doing this, but submitting to Him saying, God, I will go where you tell me to go. I will submit to your calling in my life. I'm going to do what you... And have a prayer like Paul is praying here. May I, my eyes be open. Show me, Father God, that, that wisdom, that discernment to step into the calling that you've placed on my life. A wise person is thankful to God. A wise person is seeking His calling in their life. Third, a wise person is asking God to help you comprehend the riches of this glorious inheritance he's talking about. We looked at this a little bit last week. In the beginning of chapter 1, right in the beginning of this letter, he talks about that inheritance, that, that inheritance. We looked at what that inheritance is. And, and we kind of understood what Paul has given this, this early church. They understand that inheritance. It's something that is yet to come, something that's going to come in the future. You're going to inherit it in the future. You don't have it yet, but it's coming. There's a hope that is built 
on something eternal and not something in this world that will fade and pass away. Oh, friends, are you praying to ask God to help you comprehend the riches of that glorious inheritance? Paul is praying that their understanding would include comprehending this inheritance. We can pray to comprehend that inheritance as well. To understand that, listen, we're just passing through, friends. This world is not our home. Listen, we're passing through. And it's going to be gone in a, in a blink of an eye that we're passing through to, to something greater that God, there's an inheritance that God has for believers in Him. And we know that as we are adopted sons and daughters, heirs of God Most High, why? Not because of anything we did, not because of anything that we deserved. We looked at grace last week at the beginning of this letter, and grace is God's unearned favor on our life, right? The forgiveness that we have, there's nothing we did to deserve it. We deserve the complete opposite. For the wages of sin is death. We deserve something completely opposite. But by His grace, His amazing and abundant grace, He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross. Friends, I'm here to tell you this morning, if you want to be wise, you remember that inheritance. You remember the price that was paid at Calvary. You remember the blood that was spilled. And you thank Him every day for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us of our sins. Friends, listen, there's nothing in in this world that matters more than the blood of Jesus Christ. A wise person is going to know that and reflect upon that. Oh, friends, you want to be wise? Understand the price that was paid. Oh, the riches of God that await that glory far beyond. But listen, understand that price that was paid for that salvation. Oh, friends, as we're adopted sons and daughters, heirs of God because of Jesus Christ, there's an inheritance as His children. Just as you might think of an earthly inheritance from a family member. Oh, there's one far greater. Far greater that God's got waiting for you on the other side. And Paul's reminding the early church, you want to be wise. You want to be wise? Give thanks to God for all He's doing. Pray to Him to help understand that calling. Oh, and be thankful. And pray to Him that, that we can fully grasp us and start to understand the grace that was poured out for this inheritance that awaits us. The last one this morning, friends, number four. Ask God to help you experience His great power. There's power, friends. Oh, there's wonder-working power. We sing about it. Scripture talks about it. Paul talks about it here as he finishes up this first little section. This morning, let's look at it together. In verses 18 to 23, he talks about this power that's far greater. He says, The eyes of understanding to be enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of this calling, and what the riches of the glory of this inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us, who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and sit Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under His feet and gave Him to be the head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. Paul is using a number of words to express the reality of God's great power. He says it's an exceeding greatness. He says it's a working power. He says it's a mighty power. He says, listen, the same power that raised Jesus from the grave. He's saying the power that resurrected Jesus Christ, the one that is now seated at the right hand of the Father, the one that all dominion is over, the one that the church, and listen, his bride, he says the body of the church, that power living in you because of the Holy Spirit. Oh, friends, don't go around living a defeated life. The enemy wants to make you think like you're on the ropes. That temptation you've been facing, that sin you've been facing, that battle that you've been facing, that brokenness, that despair, that depression that you've been facing, the enemy wants to feel like you're cornered, like you're all alone, and that you're in a dark place. But God is saying something else. God's word, friend, is saying something else. As a believer, you live in victory. Why? Not because of anything we got, but because the power that lives in you. Friends, it's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. He's saying that's the power. You want to know true wisdom? Know the power that's living in you, friends. Oh, we got to stop living a defeated life and understand we stand with the champions of champions. We stand with the Lord Jesus Christ and the same power is living in you. Paul's telling the early church, this early church, this new movement, these new Christ followers, saying that power is in you. That same power that raised Jesus. Oh, friends, live in victory. No matter what battle you're going through, we know we're just passing through this world. We know there will be pain and there will be brokenness. Our bodies will begin to fail us. Loved ones will pass. And we know there will be mourning and there will be sadness. The scripture talks about that. Jesus weeps. Why? When his friend passes. Listen, he knows what's going to happen. He knows, Jesus knows the miracle he's about to do. And yet he weeps. Listen, friends, this world is broken. We're living in a broken world. But, oh, friends, we have a Savior 
who stepped down from that throne to come into this broken world, to live among us, to know that pain and that suffering, to, to understand the loss of friends and loved ones. Listen, to walk those steps. And he gave it all for us on the cross. You see, God said, listen, you don't have to go climb that mountain like these other places in religion. No, he said, I'm going to send it down to you. God sent us his son on a rescue mission for us. I praise God and I thank him because I was a sinner saved by grace. Living in brokenness, living in sin, and it's by God's grace. It's by his love. A wise person is going to understand the power through the Holy Spirit that's living inside of you. That power that Paul's telling the early church in Ephesus. Oh, friends, he's telling us and he's reminding us today. Friends, I talked about it a little earlier as we began our time together. Next week, we're going to be talking about some of this power. We're going to be talking about a spiritual warfare that we're in. There's a war going on. Now, there's battles that we see with our eyes, and, and now our culture is, is, is it's gotten bolder and bolder in its blasphemy. It's gotten bolder and bolder in its sin. And yes, we see a lot of that effect with our eyes now that maybe we didn't see 50 years ago. We see, it, we see it on the front pages more. Maybe you turn on TV, maybe you walk down the street and you're seeing it. Oh, but friends, there's so much more that's taking place that we don't see with our eyes. Oh, we're in the midst of a battle, friends. There's a war raging. There's a war raging. And if you're a parent or grandparent, I'm here to tell you there's a war raging for the soul of your child. And the devil is working overtime because he knows his time is short. Oh, friends, I want you to be here Sunday night, next week. We're going to be continuing looking at this power that's living in us. We're going to be taking a look at the battle that's going on, the evil forces around us, of what's going on in this world right now, in our society, and what God's Word has to say. Listen, not what Jonathan has to say, but what God's Word has to say about it, because that's where the truth comes from, friends. We've got to know what His Word says. We've got to put on that full armor, because we're fighting a war that a lot of times we don't see in front of us, but it's in front of us. Paul's prayer for wisdom for the believers in Ephesus, it wasn't just a small prayer. Friends, it was a big prayer. It was a scope that was grand. Sometimes in our lives, we can kind of get really quick and small in our prayers. Maybe you've been there. And like you kind of come to that prayer time, and it's just kind of like, Lord, just bless me on my day, amen, gone. And then you're gone about your day. Oh, friends, Paul's praying a big prayer. And he's reminding us to be wise, not in our own eyes, but through Christ. He's reminding us, God's word is reminding us today about that power that's living. Listen, don't just be living in the small prayers. Oh, friends, be living in those big prayers. These big prayers as Paul is praying. This prayer of Paul is a large prayer. It calls upon the resources of heaven to fill lives. God has an abundance of wisdom that we need so desperately. Friends, we need it in our world today. For God to give us wisdom of words to speak, when to speak it, how to speak it, how to be loved, how to speak the truth, right? In love. Speak the truth. We don't bend, we don't break, you don't waver on the word of God. We speak the truth in love. Oh, friends, we got to go to the Lord and say, Lord, give me the words to speak. Give me the attitude to have. Oh, God, speak through me. Let's pray big prayers together, friends, as a church. In your life, I want to encourage you. Maybe this week is the first week you'll start doing it. Maybe you've been doing it for a long time. You take a little journal out. You go get to, listen, Jennifer loves journals. <laughs> I'll tell you what, no matter where we go, <laughs> we go to a store and Jennifer always like, she, there's a magnet to like the journal section. Maybe you're the same. Maybe you love journals. Jennifer loves journals. Like we go down the aisle, she's like, oh, it's a new journal. <laughs> like she's got all these journals. Listen, maybe you got a bunch of journals. Maybe you don't have one on. You need one. Get a journal. Start writing down people's names to be praying for. Start writing down, Lord, let me pray for wisdom. Maybe you've been struggling with, well, what is that call? Pastor, you said we need to step into the call. Maybe you've been struggling with that. I just don't know what that calling is God's placed on my life. Maybe that's been... Take it to the Lord in prayer, friends, and write it down. Write it down and pray daily, continuously. Have you been praying for one another? Have you been giving thanks to God for the blessings in your life that you have? Oh, a wise person is going to give thanks to God for the blessings that they have. A wise person is going to give thanks to God for their friends, for the faith, for the love that is shown. A wise person is going to seek God's counsel. He's going to seek God's counsel for discernment. Whenever a situation arises, do you take it to the Lord in prayer? And friends, this morning, as we looked at that inheritance, being thankful for the redemption, for the work that God did in His Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, on that cross, have you given Him thanks for that? Do you thank Him daily for that gift of salvation that He poured out? Maybe this morning you're joining us online, or maybe you're in this room. And maybe that's where you need to start this morning. Maybe it's that gift of salvation, that inheritance that Paul's talking about. He's talking about it here to the early church. 
Maybe that inheritance is something you haven't stepped into yet. You haven't entered into that relationship. To be a, a son and daughter, an adopted son and daughter, heirs of God most high. The scripture's talking about through the blood of Jesus Christ that Paul is talking about. The one that was raised that Paul is talking about here. Last week, as we read the first chapter of Ephesians, the, the in him, through Christ, in him, in Christ, in him, in Christ. That Christ that all is built upon, maybe you haven't entered into that relationship yet. Oh, friends, don't leave this place not knowing. Not knowing that Jesus Christ, who came and lived a perfect life, died on that cross for you. He died on that cross for me because of what I did, because of the sin that I did, the brokenness that was in my life. Do you know him today? If you know him today and you're living with him, maybe this morning was a reminder of that for you through our baptisms. As we celebrated how God is working lives and maybe there's been a moment in your life when you came to Christ and you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, uh, but you really haven't made that known. You haven't, you haven't kind of stepped out and said, I am a Christ follower. We call that believer's baptism like we have this morning. Maybe God's asking you to do that. And maybe God is calling for you to be a part of a community. Here at Juniper Bay, this is a community of Christ followers. The body of Christ, listen, every single one of God has given you a mission and a calling. Maybe this morning God is asking for you to be a part of this church family. Whatever God is asking, I want you to be obedient. Let's be obedient to follow through with whatever God is asking of us. And this morning, if for the very first time, you say, you know what, I need to follow Jesus. I need to know more about that Jesus. I want you to come up here and grab me by the hand. If you're joining us online, you shoot us a message. I want to know more about Jesus. Can you tell me? I'd love to tell you more about Jesus. There are men and women in this building right now that would love to tell you more about Jesus. Whatever God is asking you to do this morning, friends, let's be obedient. And let's seek wisdom, not wisdom from this world, wisdom from his word. Oh, friends, he's telling us right here. Those keys are right there. Oh, let's live in a spirit of thankfulness. Let's pray. Father God, this morning, Lord, we are just...